If you've been following me for a while, then you probably realize by now that my lessons tend to demystify the concept of chord tones. With that said, I've noticed that many students are still compartmentalizing the information they're learning and then fail to be able to make the connection from one chord to another when playing over tunes. Music always moves in a forward direction, so it's required knowledge to know where you're going in advance as the chords are changing. I talk a lot in my lessons about understanding what I call the Holy Trinity, shapes, note names, and note functions. Without this firmly within your grasp, you'll always be throwing mud against the wall and hoping that something sticks when playing over changes. The way to start getting this together is by understanding a concept called common tones. I know, I know you've already seen a plethora of lame theory lessons where some guys up on a whiteboard listing common tones for playing over challenging standards such as giant steps. But learning common tones has to be a systematic approach where you're literally able to process a chord that you're playing over and at the same time be able to process the next chord in the progression by understanding how the notes in one chord relate to the other. No quick fixes here, so hang with me. Now, this is really a basic beginner's bass lesson, but after 38 years of teaching, historically most every bass player I've come across has had some issues with understanding what notes are under their fingers. So even though I consider this to be basic, it'll most likely apply to all levels of bass players. So the way that we're gonna look at this is by taking minor seventh chords and moving them through the cycle of fourths. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the cycle of fourths, then just click over here before watching this lesson. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start with a C minor seventh chord, and then we're gonna move this through a progression of minor seventh chords going through the cycle of fourths. This is very applicable because a lot of chord progressions in Western music will have you progressing from one chord to the next, up a fourth or down a fifth. And there's an interesting relationship starting with minor seventh chords where you can isolate the common tones and this is a very cool drill. So if we take a C minor seventh chord and we play the notes, we have C, E flat, G, and B flat. Now, the note functions will be root, flat three, five, flat seven. As I progress to the F minor seventh chord, I'll have my F, A flat, C, and then my E flat. And the note function is going to be the root, the flat three, the five, and the flat seven. Now, if you're watching, and I want to do this all in position here, you'll notice straight away that the root in the flat three from the C minor seven becomes the five in the flat seven from the F minor seven. And this remains constant, this pattern, while moving through the cycle of fourths. So this is a very cool thing. Really helps you to understand or begin to understand because this takes a while. You can't just learn this in one lesson or in one week. You gotta learn this when my private students that I work with on Skype, I'll work with them on these kind of concepts for a year. But I'll tell you what, after a year, they understand these common tones and they can use this stuff. So the idea is that we went from C minor seven to F minor seven and we realize a concept that the root and the flat three from the first chord becomes the five and the flat seven from the second chord. So now from the F minor to the B flat minor seven, the same concept is gonna happen because now the root and the flat three from my F minor is gonna become the five and the flat seven of the B flat minor seven. Let's go ahead and play B flat minor seven. We have B flat, D flat, F, and A flat. So that F and that A flat is now five and flat seven, because this is root, flat three, five, flat seven. But in F, that was F, A flat, C, E flat. That was the root, and that was the flat three. 
Now the, the F in the A flat becomes the five in the flat seven over the B flat. And I hope you start to see the value already and how cool this is because it really helps you to start seeing the relationship between chords. Of course, there's a myriad of different ways that you can look at this between chords, but you got to start somewhere. And this is the problem that people have with these kind of drills. And then they never get it together because they just watch those, uh, you know, advanced, um, uh, lessons where it got everyone's you know writing on the whiteboard you know copious notes of this relates to this and this relates to this and you're just going man i don't understand anything you gotta start here this is where you start this is where you get this together okay so going from b flat to our next chord which is e flat it's going to be the same concept so my e flat then becomes E flat, G flat, B flat, D flat, and of course this is the root, this is the flat three, this is the five, and this is my flat seven. That B flat minor seven, the root and the flat three, now become the five and the flat seven of the E flat. Then we go to the A flat. The same thing happens because if we look at the root and the flat three from the E flat, this now becomes the five and the flat seven from the A flat. So if you continue moving through the keys, we're now starting at D flat and or C sharp. You can look at it either way. Maybe C sharp's a little bit easier to look at the notes. So if we have C sharp, then we have E, then we have G sharp, and then we have B, okay? And then, so what happens when I go from the C sharp to my next chord, I have the F sharp. It's gonna be F sharp, A, C sharp, E. And again, the root and the flat three from my C sharp minor seven becomes the five and the flat seven for the F sharp minor seven. And then we just continue through this. So from the F sharp to the B, it's gonna be the same thing because F sharp and A, which is the root and the flat three of the F sharp becomes the five and the flat seven from the B minor seven. Then from B minor seven progressing to E minor seven, the root in the flat three becomes the five in the flat seven of the E minor seven. And then from the E minor seven, the E and the G, which is the root in the flat three of the E minor seven becomes the five E and the flat seven G of A minor seven. And then the root and the flat three of A minor seven becomes the five in the flat seven of D minor seven. And then finally, the D and the F of the D minor seven, which is the root in the flat three, becomes the five in the flat seven of the G minor seven. So you can now play through this entire exercise doing this and then noting both the names of the notes that you have to play and then the note function. Now, if you really want to get a lot of this together, you've got to buy my book, Chord Tone Sudoku. This is a fabulous book. Uh, it's going to be available this week as well on my Lulu uh, Books page. Just Google Joe Hubbard Lulu Books and you'll see this as a printed book. So I'm going to just put the link over here for the uh, ebook. That's a PDF download. You can get that immediately. Uh, but if you want the actual printed book, you can get that now as well. And just uh, check that out on my Lulu Spotlight page. Now, in this lesson, we're just dealing with the root flat three, five, and flat seven of the minor seventh chords, which is a really good place to start. But there's a whole bunch of other common tones available as well. And you can really start trying this over different chord types too. 
For now, just experiment with these tones and over this chord and make sure that you're aware of the relationship between the note that you're playing and the chord that you're playing over. If you're interested in becoming a better improvising bass player and learning great musical content from arpeggios to grooves, then subscribe to my channel now. If you like this video today, then be sure to support my channel by giving it a big thumbs up. And if you really like this video, then please check out my books, my membership website, and my Skype lessons. Until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.